been on my mind that I wanted to talk about today. It's um, one word, satisfaction, being satisfied. So this morning I was saying to myself, what is the purpose of all this bodybuilding? Why do I do it? Why do I invest so much time in it, energy, focus? Um, and the, the same thing kept coming to my head. It was the feeling of when I get to an old man's age and when I'm on my deathbed and my family are around me, am I going to be able to say to myself that I'm satisfied with everything I've done up to that point? And I was just thinking to myself, what is it that satisfies me? What is it that makes me feel like I've done enough? What do I channel my energy into that makes me feel like I'm using my energy wisely? And the one thing that kept resounding in my head was the word bodybuilding. Come back and back and back and back. No matter what I was thinking, I was thinking about every other venture I've ever tried. I was thinking about, you know, I obviously like gaming, I like training, um, I like eating out, I like seeing friends. But the one word that related to satisfaction the most and felt like the path to satisfaction was bodybuilding. So with that being said, that tells me that next year is going to be an amazing year because my brain is already in that mode where it's like, it's on the hunt for that satisfaction. It's already desiring to put more into bodybuilding because I know that that's the one thing in life that gives back to me more than anything in terms of how I feel intrinsically. So uh, it's going to be a good year because that hunger is crazy. We're in for some uh, chest and biceps today. We're still like in, we're in like week five now of post-show recovery. So the principles with the training are pretty much the same still. Um, but it's worth noting that this is week five so that you can see how long this goes on for. Um, we've probably only got one week left of this and then we're able to start putting together our programming for the off-season training. Patrick's literally devising something for us now over the next few weeks. So I think in by the end of this week, we'll have one week left of this training and then we'll be able to start really, um, really working towards what is going to change our physiques for the next show. This right now is supplementary. It's very much just keeping us at a certain point and uh, maintaining a certain amount of muscle and also stopping us from turning into fat shits. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. Can't wait really. So yeah, a couple, only a few more sessions like this guys. This will probably be the last session that we actually film this list style, which is the straight sets, two sets, real basic. Face stuff. We're using it, um, we don't normally face outwards on the Smith. The motion's different, but I remember doing it when I was younger and I didn't mind it. So what it'll do is it'll force you to push up and over a bit more at the top of the movement which is only going to hit a lot more upper chest anyway so we'll give it a run we'll see how it feels One. Ten. Good, one more. Oh, you got this. Yep. Love this stuff. Good to have you. I said on some of the other videos, what I'm trying to do right now is where we're in this period of recovery, I'm trying to re-establish really good form with all the movements. So even if that costs me a little bit of weight in the process, it's fine because once I start reintroducing things that are going to help me get stronger again, the form that I establish now will go forward with me into my new season. So this is the perfect time to correct any form issues, um, get comfortable in movements that perhaps weren't so comfortable. And then once the uh, season starts, you'll be in a very good position going forward.
it's in there. I felt like a set of squats. Because those last few reps, because I know I had no spotter, yeah. I was like, come on, breathe. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Done on that one. Right, guys, I'm going to let this man introduce himself. He's a legend. You won't be able to guess what he is or does. So yeah. please feel free to take your time off on the camera. No worries. Hi, guys. Uh, it's Paul from My Lunchbox Meal Prep. Just been down doing a delivery today in Ashford and I thought I'd pop in and see James, say hello, introduce myself properly and uh, just see how he gets through his days and his workout sessions and um, so far it's like pretty knackering just watching so uh, I'm going to let him crack on and do what he's got to do and I'm going to get back on my way up to make some more food. Cheers guys. And uh, no forgetting, if you haven't put two and two together, Paul's been sorting out my food. So all the food you've seen on my YouTube videos, the MLB food, that is obviously Two and two now, you understand where it comes from. So, massive thanks to Paul for sorting it out. Um, it's really good food. This isn't even a plug, this is reality. This is me just telling the truth. It's convenient as hell. It, it will meet all the demands that you have for a bodybuilder or someone into fitness just trying to keep a lean, clean diet. Uh, beef, salmon, steak, you name it, whatever you need, they got it. And uh, I promise you now, I've been doing it for weeks and I haven't got sick of it yet. So, check them out, guys. On my Instagram, they're actually. What I'll do is I think I've got a link in my bio. If I haven't, I'll make sure I get one up there. If not, check out my lunchbox uh, prep and then let's see what they got for you guys. This is part of the workout. This is so you get some traps. I haven't been training traps directly because I'll be carrying bags. Right, we're, um, we're gonna do like an incline press, press fly, which is like a fly, but we we'll allow our arms to come across the body and press up into a straight position. It just means we can put a bit more load on it and a little bit more stress. Safer on the shoulder joint and it feels really good. So, two sets of that should be good. focus on here isn't just to get it up and down like as weird as that sounds there's a massive difference on machines like this with a controlled rep and an explosive rep probably a plate aside difference if you're really going for the explosivity but we're trying to reduce that and take that away because like I say we're resetting our form uh, so we'd actually go lighter than we probably would have a few months back but with hopefully even more accuracy and then like I say take that forward into the, the 2021 kind of season so he's gonna work with two and a half I'm gonna work with only like three and a half and just keep it really precise try and engage try and not use muscles that aren't the intended muscle groups it's very easy to you know get involved and spoil the set with shoulders and triceps um, because obviously the chest is gonna get tired it's gonna to want to create some like heat patterns in order to get the weight up so the key really is just for us to go to mechanical failure on the pecs and then just put it down So we've finished, uh, we've completed our PCT without going into too many details. That's all done. So we've been clean for five weeks almost now. We've got another week, so that'll be six weeks. So just letting you know where we're at. Nice. 
back off 10. So we're gonna do a little back off again, drop 10 kilos per side. Again, you'll notice. That set there, that we could have probably cranked out one or two more reps with a wriggle. But we don't want that. We're trying to avoid those, those bad habits. So uh, as soon as you feel that it's hard and the, the next rep is going to require movement from every other body part, fuck it off. Last one in there. Finish with some sort of uh, cable fly for chest. Cable or machine. So normally two presses, two flies at the minute. Always make sure there's an incline press in there. Prioritize incline. Uh, this this has a subtle client like incline on it. I wouldn't say this is exactly flat, would you? No, well that's not exactly flat. And the angle that that goes up at yeah. doesn't go straight up and down yeah. or forward. It kind of goes up and angle like we up and arc, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So if you used to say, ask me, James, how do I program a chest session? First and foremost, prioritize an incline press of some sorts. Um, then I'd have a secondary press that you reduce the weight and kind of focus on contraction like we are with this. And then as long as you've got a fly in there somewhere to work the, the chest from those different angles, I think you're pretty much covered. Um, I like to do a free weight and a, and a machine fly in the same session, hence why we did the uh, incline dumbbell fly. So with those four exercises, you're pretty much covered. There's not a lot more that you could do for your chest. Cable fly, um, slight, in, slight decline in the motion. So we're just going to take a step forward like Louis has and just focus on coming down at this angle. Squeeze it under the pec. Again, it's basically just taking the pec through its longest range of motion. It works up and back, not just back. So I want to take it up as well. Start bicep, no? We'll do some uh, high pulley, jump pulley. Don't do that very often, so cable is always a good way to start a workout. It's uh, gentle on the joints, get a bit of blood in there, and then we can follow it up with some free weights. in the Olympia this year, bro. <laughs> yeah. I want to be up there and I want to be my best. Um, but I'm going to say this, I've said it a few times, I've said it on my other socials, platforms. I think the dark horse is Hunter. I think he can place his highest second. Um, yeah, I feel like Hunter's someone to watch. Do 
standing dumbbell curl, but we're going to just do it on one side then the other. So we literally just do like eight to ten or whatever, eight to ten. Just find it works really well. I've been doing them consistently for pretty much most of the year. They seem to help. But our arms look like Phil Heath. That's why I wonder. That's why I hope. Please get some engagement under the channel. We want to know who's going to win the Olympia. If this video is out before then, should be just before, um, then I want everyone to comment below their top five. Top five. Top, yeah, five, not ten, five. And that goes for, I want the top five of the Open and I want the top three of the 212. 212 is going to be very good as well. And then, on top of that, I want to know where do you think I would have placed it? <laughs> So we're going to finish with hammer curls and then we're going to do four sets of abs. Um, probably, like I said, probably rope crunch today. I tend to mix up between a, a leg raise variation and a crunch variation. So even normal crunch today will add uh, rope crunch. forearm on this side. That there, that. Need some treatment. Damn. Get the old ferro gun in there. Yeah, when I grip like that, I get a really distinctive, almost pain in there. And don't say it's because I because I'm left-handed. It's not that.
stay on top of the abs. It's uh, genetically a bit of a weaker body part for me. They're fine when they're flexed, but in a standing kind of relaxed position, I've got very, very shallow abs. And most of the criticism I get from people normally is when I'm in a front relaxed or a front double bicep is that my abs are too shallow, which, you know, yeah, I get it. It's not by choice, I promise you. Um, you know, you've got different types of bodybuilders. Certain bodybuilders like Milos Sarsikov would stand in the front relaxed and their abs are popping through. And then you've got guys like Jay Cutler, who in his later career, abs didn't really pop through until he hit the ab shot. I think a little bit of it is where I'm forcing my body to be bigger. Obviously, genetically, I'm not a huge person and I've put a lot of muscle on. So there's that factor. And two, genetically, I do actually have shallow abs. So I'm doing everything I can to try and get them as crisp as possible. Because I noticed in Spain, when I was actually in the shot, they were pretty good. Um, so now I'm just trying to improve them as much as I can even in my standing poses. Um, I, I don't know how easy that's to do in an off season, because in off season, obviously I'm gonna put weight on, um, but it doesn't mean I won't try. Ooh. They spend money. Well right, guys, we are, uh, we're done. I'm just uh, wrapping up the session. Just catch up with a couple of friends, Big Will, Big Julian, and um, just gonna have a little mince about, and then I'm gonna do five minutes on the bike to cool down, get myself home. Uh, I might be recording a podcast with Fuad tonight, I'm not too sure. So yeah, just a regular gate. Regular gay, because you spoke about gays. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 I'm just, uh, we're keeping this in, we're keeping this in. It happens, it happens. <laughs> he's doing a, I'm going to tell you why, because he's doing a photo shoot with someone that's, their market is kind of that, so it was on my brain. But yeah, I'm not trying to say anything bad. Anyway, that is the session done. Oh, that was funny times. But, um, well, I, I probably won't see you now till after Christmas. I think that's the case, isn't it? So, just want to wish everyone a really, really lovely time. Enjoy your Christmas, guys. Um, I know it's a bit of a weird year, but all the more power for January and the new year. And uh, I'll catch up with you on other platforms in the meantime. So take care, big love, see you soon. Thanks again. <laughs>